Hello folks and welcome back and or welcome to this video for the first time. Let's see, today I'm going to talk about some uh, some shapes in that I, I want you to learn to recognize shapes in the items that you're drawing, such as this, this Christmas ball, which is nothing but a circle. The three most widely recognized shapes when drawing are the circle, the triangle, and the square. All right, so moving on to that very um, same Christmas ball, we're going to obviously draw the circle loosely, as I've tried to show you before. And then it's intersected by this, this cone. <laughs> Not a cone, Wiley, okay. So see, this is what happens when you, when you talk without a script or a teleprompter. I'm just, I'm winging it. So there we have our, our Christmas ball. And of course, it's got this little loop at the top and it's got this little hanger. All right, so we see how that, how that is done. And of course, it's shaded like that. All right, which brings us to the three-dimensionality of these items. So for example, the triangle, you know, it can be a pyramid, it can also be a cone, which is a rounded bottom and a pointed top. It can also be a um, um, <laughs> sphere, okay, rather than a circle. And then, you know, the, the um, square can be a cube, something like that. And all of these, once again, using my, my light source up here on the left, are shaded thusly. You know, you got your, your light on this side, you got your dark on and that side. In the case of the cube, it, it's going to be a little bit more dark over here. Perhaps a little lighter over here if your light is up a little higher and then light on the top. And then, of course, you know, each of these are going to cast their own sort of shadow. <clears throat> and yes, the Christmas ball is laying on the tabletop, not on a tree. All right, so there you have it. Right, so the entire object of this exercise is to recognize shapes to make your drawing easier. So in this case, we're going to do a, uh, a tape, a roll of tape. And what we do is we do, we draw an ellipse, which is essentially the circle that's flattened out. And in a case like this, you really need to sit down and practice being able to do these in one shot like this. So we go back to our tape, we look at our tape, we have an ellipse, we do another ellipse and we try to do it somewhat thicker in the front because we're looking across the top of the tape. Again, we're trying to think about our dimensionality. And then of course, along with that, we, we have the bottom half of an ellipse here for the lower part of the lower edge of the tape roll. We have the sides and then we have this back wall of the tape roll. So you see that? Once again, using, using the shadow, it's gonna be darker over here, darker over here, and it works its way all the way to the light on that side. All right, so a little shadow on the ground, something like that. And with shadows, it's always good to kind of emphasize this, this dark here, this edge a little bit more. All right, so there's your, there's using your ellipsis to draw a roll of tape. All right, so now we have this, uh, this blending stump. This is the blending stump that I've shown you before in drawing. And essentially it is a elongated cylinder and which, of course, I always forget to include a cylinder because it's it's not the usual top three. You know, these are what everybody looks at all the time. And there are so many more shapes you really need to think about. And one is that cylinder. So back to our cylinder. That's what we have. And then it's got a cone on each end. Once again, there's our cone. So. In a case like this, we go scrambling for an eraser and we erase these 
these parts that you're not going to see, obviously. And we can fuzz it out a little bit, so that gives us our our blending stump. And of course, a little bit of shadow on the ground, a little bit of shadow underneath. And that's obviously a whole nother lesson, but the point is I want you to learn to recognize the shapes of the thing that you're drawing to draw them. What else we got? We got a we got a box of Conte crayons, which could, you know, be a, a book a box of matches or something. So what we have here <clears throat> is essentially this rectangle. All right, there's your full rectangle, but it also has this inner rectangle like that. And then, of course, it has these little rectangles inside and so forth. So if we, if we look at this rectangle like this with all of its parts, okay? There's your back line, there's your back line, there's your back line. Imagine it like an invisible, like a transparent box, all right? So we do it that way, and we do it also with this one. We imagine this entire box inside, knowing full well that these lines disappear. They're invisible, but sometimes it helps folks to, to see the invisibility, to see the invisible lines, the ones that you're not going to see. Sometimes it helps you to draw by using that line, those invisible lines. All right, here we have a rather complicated shape. It's a, a wall anchor. So what we do is uh, we have to, and this is a light drawing, we have to draw this inverted cone. It has a little bit larger, like a nail head on top. And what happens with these is we have to uh, imagine that this spiral comes down. This is the back side, this is the front. The back side, the front, and the back side, and the front. See how this just sort of spirals down, gets closer and closer as it goes around? So in this case, then we emphasize the front. The ones that go around the back, obviously, are invisible. Has this little edge here. Oh, time to sharpen that pencil. Where'd that sharpener go? Here's one. All right. Round and round. Where's that brush? Oh, we gotta get all the tools out today. All right, so then we, we sharpened our pencil. We come in here a little bit and we emphasize our cone a little bit better and so forth. So it's got this little hole in the top for Phillips screwdriver or something, a little shading, etc. All right, now we have this, um, this torus. And that is done. Once again, we revisit that ellipse. Do that lower edge. We do that rounded part. The lower front edge of the, of the ellipse. So you see how that works? It's really an ellipse here. Rounded part and the lower edge of an ellipse here, which really kind of connects that. So you see that invisible line thing once again? Ellipse one, ellipse two, and that lower front edge. And then of course it's darker underneath here. Maybe a little darker over here than darker on this side as we go around. So we have this sort of rounded rounded torus. This is also wrapped in bamboo, so that's a good time to use these contour lines. You see how I curved here? Then I straighten them out, then I start going in the opposite direction as I go around. Same deal here. Only opposite once again. They, they arc this way and then get straight and then arc back the other way. Alright, so let's imagine a, uh, a glass cake cake stand. So once again, we have ellipses, but this seems like a lesson in ellipses, doesn't it? That is because it's some of the most complicated. And then we have this secondary ellipse once again. 
Remember, this is also glass. So we're, we're gonna see through, we're gonna see this rear line. Here are your sides. Then we're gonna put an ellipse here, which is gonna be a cylinder. Okay, so there's your cylinder. And another smaller ellipse here for, for the stand. And then once again, another somewhere here. There we go. Once again, another one for that lower front edge. All right. So we have this, this cylinder here, and we don't want to make that stand flat like that, but we use that cylinder as a guide. So we might go something like that. We might also put a little rounded torus in here and so forth. So, and even with glass, you're going to have a little bit of, of shading around all those edges and, of course, a, some kind of cast shadow on the table. And obviously, one of these days, I'm going to have to do a tutorial on drawing, drawing glass, which is quite, quite the challenging subject. So, there we go. All right, so let's draw this, this watercolor palette. So essentially, I'm gonna move it off screen a little bit. Essentially, it's, it is a large rectangle like that. Okay, so there's your flat top. Come down here and make that, that box. thinner in the back, a little fatter in the front, something like that. And roughly, it looks like these trays go over about two-thirds of the way, so we do this little guideline. And there's five trays. If we divide this, for example, we divide this, this upper rectangle about like that, connect those dots, it gives you an idea of where this center tray is going, this center depression is going to go because it, it's really difficult to do these in scale if you don't pay attention. So we, we divide this this area a little bit and we lightly put in these these other areas, these other watercolor wells or paint wells. And again with this is all very light until you're confident about about what you've done. And once again, you have these elliptical shapes. See how easy that is once you, once you know how? All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. So then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna emphasize some of these lines. I'm gonna round some of these lines off because it has this little rounded contour. Emphasize that, maybe a little lighter back here, a little stronger here, a little lighter back there. Round it, round it, and so forth. All right, so once again, using this light source up here somewhere, we, we shadow, we create a little shadow inside that well. Darker over here, lighter over there. Hardly even shows up on the right side. So once again, emphasize that, that, curved edge, em emphasize this back side, lighter on the right, emphasize the left side, lighter on the right, etc. till you're all through. A little dark and a little bit more. See, I do this in, in levels rather than just confidently saying, oh, well, this is all this way. We, we look at it. We allow our brain to, to translate what we're seeing. We, we take in the feedback and we redraw a little bit. All right, these wells have a back wall. Look at that. Look how easy that is. And once again, we need to sharpen these shapes up a little bit to our back wall right here. Just keep going. Once you do it once or twice, it's just a matter of going through the motions. Look at that, it's almost ready to, almost ready to use. 
So there you go. Then once again, pretty flat area here. Might cast a little shadow there. Again, a flat dark there, a little shadow, so forth. Because this side is picking up the light source. There we go. And then we look at it again, trying to translate what we're seeing, realizing what else we might need to do. And that is we need to darken the front. Now this is a white plastic tray, so, so we don't want to darken that too much. And then we're going to do a little, little cast shadow on the tabletop. A little sharper here. And this, is, of course, is, is a good time to remind you of what this blending stump is used for. And that's to soften up these lines. If you don't like the sharpness of the lines, you can use this to, to blur them quite a bit. This is a paper blending stump that I've, I've demoed before. And it just, it's used to just soften up your drawing. It's, it's really quite useful. All right, so there you have our, our um, painting tray. Okay, for my next trick, I'm going to teach you how to, how to draw a Christmas tree. Just basically not a really detailed one, but the concept that a tree is nothing but a cone, especially these trees that you get in those, you know, those nurseries that grow them and trim them. So we have this transparent cone, let's just call it that, all right? All right, so very simply, what we do is we imagine that we're going around the back, around the front. See how that works? You just do this little spirally line, which goes further and further apart as it goes towards the bottom. Something like that. So what this is, is this is the front, perhaps it's garland. So we kind of emphasize that a bit. Maybe it's gonna be popcorn and cranberries or little glass spheres. I don't know, it's your tree. I'm just, I'm just helping you draw it. All right, so obviously these lines back here are invisible. They're, they're in the back. This becomes your guide for your branches, something like that. But seeing these transparent lines helps you do it. If you had to just draw these, you know, it's not as easy as it might appear without doing this, without envisioning this, or imagining this, this spiral around the backside. So erase those invisible lines and that gives us our, um, our solid tree. And of course you may, and if we did this all light, you may want to go back and do all these these spheres, these glass balls, or popcorn and cranberries. Let's see, popcorn, cranberry, popcorn, cranberry. Again, I'm just thinking about shapes. Oops, got a cranberry and a popcorn there. All right, so I guess I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. Sometimes it's like that. And I don't know, this might be some sort of other tinsel or something. So you get the idea. So in this case, using this as your guideline, you might come back later and do this, this um, trunk. And then do some branches and so forth. I mean, it, it's anybody's guess what I'm doing at this point. You know, I'm just making it up as I go. And you know, you got your evergreen needles coming out here, left and right, and so forth. And you got your garland clinging onto it. See how simple that is? And you just keep building it up. Now, naturally, if you do this and color it, it makes a great deal more sense. And of course, let's see a star. One, two, three, four, five. Easy stuff. And you give it some shine, yeah. There we go. So that's basically how you do that. Now, obviously, if you wanted 
to do the, this in a more natural way, you would have these these bits of garland. You would, once again, you still have to do the spiral, but it may be that your garland clings to specific branches. You know, you, again, you take more time with it, but I'm trying to show you the, the fundamentals. All right, so there we have our tree. What else we got over here? Oh, ribbon. So a ribbon basically is um, done by doing yet another cone. This time it's inverted. So we start at the top and we kind of wander around here and we do something like this perhaps. Let it trail off there. This is a little bit tricky in that you have to come over here and I'm gonna get lost in my not. Oh, here we go. This is the back side. It's curling around. Then we take that line and we come over here like that. And we see this is the front of the ribbon and it gravity pulls on it, curls it down. See that? And then the back side starts again. Here we go. Same deal happens. Gravity pulls it, pulls it, and then the back side comes around again and Let's see where we go, all the way to the bottom, something like that. Better put a little thumbtack in here before it, before it falls off. So that's essentially your ribbon. You gotta shade in here. Again, light source on upper left. You're gonna get tired of hearing me say that, I know, but that's what I almost always use because it's, it's just a way of being consistent in your drawing. You don't get mixed up. Sometimes I do things and if I'm not paying attention, I end up with shadows coming from the left and you know, light source coming from the left and the right. And so you're working on two different days or something and you just kind of forget what you're doing. So you really do have to consider your light source. All right, so there's our ribbon. All right, so lastly, let's see, let's do a, let's do a car. Great deal more complicated. We're gonna start with that same old rectangle. All right, so there we go. We're gonna put another rectangle on top, representing the, the roof and windshield and that sort of thing. All right, so there you have it. Basically, it's like one box piled on top of another. I'm gonna slant this part of the box and maybe curve it a little bit to represent that windshield. Give it a 1930s vibe with that split rail in the middle. Curve the top a little bit, perhaps sweep back. Some side windows, which once again are more rectangles, something like that. All right, maybe we'll round out the front a little bit. Round off the sides. Let's see, how about couple of ellipses for the headlights, sort of a curved rectangle for the grill. We'll give a little 1950s Corvette grill there. Little, um, or whatever that thing is called, decorative hood ornament. Hood ornament, that's it. Inside dash, we'll curve these doors a little bit. Maybe we'll do a, little, a wheel well here, wheel well there. And essentially these, these uh, tires are a cylinder, so you have to be able to, you know, do those wheels are somewhat elliptical and not, not circles. So a little bit more elliptical. All right, better straighten that one out because I'm giving you bad advice there. All right, so let's, once again, elliptical, same deal. Door handle, a couple of, Triangles on the back for some fins, perhaps a little, little tail light bumper, a little curved bumper around the front, and some, some bumper guards. You see, all of these are just basic shapes. You just have to be able to look at what you're doing and, and break it down. Um, inside, let's do a seat, which again, here's that invisible line. Little bench seat, here's your bottom part. So just to help you see that. So it, and then there's your back side of the, of the um, side of the car. And then inside, once again, you know, 
There's your seat, your seat, etc. Oh, let's give it some some fancy chrome mirrors and a big flashy antenna with a flag on it. All right, there we go. All right, thank you for watching, and um, on to the next video.